okay, here's our view. Um, we understand that when a random variable okay, it has a normal distribution with mean, mu, and variance sigma squared, which means the curve is like density curve is like that. It's symmetrical about mu. Um, one fact that we, that we know is that we can transform this, define this as z very conveniently. And this, this is, has a normal with these I means distributed, has a normal 0, 1 distribution, mean 0. Variance one. So even if mu or sigma squared is an unknown, this is always going to be normal zero one. So I'm going to motivate the I'm going to motivate the the uh, idea of a confidence interval. So what we're going to learn today is about we're going to be able to brief introduction to confidence intervals, then we'll do a little bit of an example. We have two rotors. And the positions are given by two random variables, x1 and x2, which are independent and identically distributed, normal, mu, uh, normal, normal mu, two random variables. That means um, their positions are normally distributed along this real line here. And somewhere on this line, there's a point mu. We don't know where it is. Mu is unknown. If we did know where it was, we wouldn't be doing this confidential problem. So mu is unknown. We want the object of this game is an interval which, which estimates it. Uh, the variance is known. It's, very, it's known to be 2. Um, so we have a, an interval. Um, and the interval is random. What this interval is, you can interpret this basically as the, the point where a, a spectator is, or the point where a, a, a walk, or they're racing and there's a water point. Um, we want to estimate what we want to estimate where that water point is on the course, and we can do that um, by interval estimation. Um, the question is, how long do we want to make the interval? Uh, what we would do is take the interval, just take this interval right here, from x bar minus 1 to x bar plus 1. This is at, let's pretend this is x1 and this is x2. They can be switched out of the way. This guy can be in front of that guy. That doesn't matter. The same part of it. The x bar, by definition, is a sample mean of the two. x1 plus x2 over 2. And that would be the midpoint of the, of the two rows. So the midpoint looks like it's about right here. Midpoint. Here's x bar. Very close to mu, but it doesn't have to be. I'm just drawing like that. Uh, and we're going to ask, so we'll make the interval 1, 
This could be one mile, as, as if these two runners are running a marathon. So we, we want to know, we want to estimate where this, where this uh, water point or uh, landmark is um, by this random interval. I say this interval is random. I stress that because the position of the, the position of it, right here is the middle. This interval can move. It can be here. It can be over here. It can be over here. It all it all depends on what the event next bar is. Now we're going to go back to this again because because x1 and x2 are normal mu2 x bar is normal mu1 uh, that means um, mean u and variance 1 what we're asking can you go over here a little bit we want to know um, the probability that the interval catches the point mu. We want to know that probability. What that means is mu would have to be between x bar minus 1 and x bar plus 1. We can make the interval as wide as we want. I choose to make it two miles, a one mile radius each way. Um, and that's uh, what we would do. Of course, if I make it larger, this, this probability will increase. to be a greater chance of finding the, the, the location point, but it won't really give any indication as to where that point is. If, if, I, if I decrease, if I, if I make the decrease this to a half, let's say, this will make the interval, uh, this will decrease the probability. It will make the interval s shorter, but it will decrease the probability. Um, so these two kind of work inversely. Anyway, if you do a little algebra, you can rewrite this as This is the probability of the absolute value of x bar minus mu is less than 1. You rewrite it, subtract x bar from both sides, and that will be the absolute value. And guess what? The variant standard deviation of this is 1. Go back to this, subtract the mean off, and divide by the standard deviation into normal 0, 1. What we're talking about then is the probability of a standard normal random variable being less than 1. I'm going to draw the curve to illustrate that, what that means. So what we're asking is the, the chance that the absolute value is less than 1, or in other words, the chance that z is between negative 1 and 1 in this shaded, air, this shaded gray region. That's what this will equal. And by symmetry of the curve, this equals, say, if, if you take off these two tails, you're left with the middle part. So the whole area of the curve is 1, and if you, did, if you, if you uh, subtract off the two tails, is uh, going to be this middle part. Now what you know about the area to the left of this negative 1 is it's exactly the same as the area to the right of 1 by symmetry. So this would be 1 minus 2 of phi of negative 1. Phi means the standard normal distribution function. And that works out to be 0.68269. There's like a 68% chance that uh, the interval of length 2 will catch this landmark right here by looking at these two runners' locations at time t. Now, um, 
in the next lecture, the next lesson, we're going to um, we're going to actually plot have the numbers, and we're going to come up with actual intervals, and then I will I will just I will we will talk about the, the difference between the realization of the interval and the random interval itself. They're, not, they're kind of it's kind of misleading what the common interval actually brings. But that, anyway, that concludes our our lesson for today.